now we're on time. So as I was saying, when we, and you're going to hear this over and over again, because yoga is there to aggravate, it's there to aggravate and effect, catalyze change. When we do something different for ourselves, the world changes because we're different. And the more, and we came, most of us came to the world to make a difference, but we slid into the rows that we were assigned because that is, we, we are pack animals and we don't actually want to stand out, but we all came to stand out. So when you make a subtle change, like showing up for 30 minutes for 30 days, which is massive, it's a big commitment, then the world is going to benefit from your commitment to yourself. As you get better, the world gets better. So thank you for showing up. Uh, today is day two. Today is dedicated to grounding. Um, as I talked about in the introduction for today on the description, we are going to look at a few poses that are all about grounding. Some of them might surprise you that they're associated with grounding the balance poses. And that's because we think grounding is touching the ground, but grounding is actually acknowledging the relationship, the reciprocal relationship between the earth and us and acknowledging that this partnership is really special and very powerful. And the more we actually lean on the earth, let the earth support us, the easier it is to do balancing poses on our hands, on our feet, on our arms, etc. So our practice is going to be hatha today, which means we're going to go from pose to pose, and we're not going to focus on breath. We're not going to do a pranayama exercise, which is also part of hatha, but we will, I will ask you every once in a while, hey, where's your breath? I will ask you to make sure that your breath is moving in your body. I have my journal. I hope you have yours. Make sure to write before we start, and we can do this right now, actually. Recommit to your devotion for these next 30 days. Recommit to what you, the question you want to understand or the change you want to embrace or the habit you want to release. Recommit to that right now. I'll give you one minute. Okay. Um, if you need to write more, just bring your journal with you. I can't see you, so <laughs> it, it won't matter um, if you're a little bit behind. And let's get started. Okay. So I've got my journal here in case any more thoughts come up. And of course, we're going to begin with a simple way to warm up our body, which are the fives, the five Tibetan rituals. So we have our arms out coming from below, our head is level, our eyes, even though our chin is parallel to the ground, our eyes are looking at the ground. And now we're going to click one, one, tap two, two, tap three, three, tap four, four, tap five, five. Close the body, close the eyes. Breathing, centering yourself. And now let's go to camel, repeated camel, because camel would not be back and forth like this. Two hands point towards the ground, shoulders down, elbows are moving towards each other, not splaying away from each other. Okay, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So today I did not go back as far as I usually do. 
And part of the reason for that is because I slept on my back wrong and it's really hurting. It's aching a little bit. And so I worked within my range. And that's always so important to work where you are, not where you think you should be. Our body is different every single day. And when we practice gentleness, our body can heal and grow and thrive. When we practice force, our body breaks. Okay, so now we're going to go to the J. Okay, so our legs are up, our upper body is making a J. Our hands are supporting our lower body if needed, or they're beside the body if it's not needed. And let's inhale, two legs down, and our gaze looks back behind us. Exhale, one. I think that was five, just in case. Now moving to tabletop. Our hands are now using the protective, the protective um, positioning. L, the rest of the fingers unfold from the L, palming the basketball or soccer ball or football. Okay, two feet on the ground. Our hands are in protective positioning. Our shoulders again are down. Our elbows are pointing behind us, not towards each other, not away from each other, behind us. Let's push on our feet and our hands up to a flat tabletop. Our gaze can look over our knees, can look at the sky, or we can break our necks and look behind us, depending on how warm you are and how comfortable you feel with that. Inhale, exhale, seat goes through two hands. Inhale. Exhale, seat goes through two hands. Inhale. Exhale, toes come off the ground, heels stay. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay, and now for our final, we're going to go from downward facing dog I mean, from upward facing dog to downward facing dog. You can do this on your knees. You can do this each level. Remember your level from yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna start at the inhale. Exhale. Like a wave rolling through over the shoulders and the hips come towards the ground, inhale. Exhale. Come to your knees. And let's begin our Hatha series. Hatha yoga means that we're going to focus on the integrity of the pose. That is more important than the flow and getting from point to point in contrast to vinyasa flow. It's literally called vinyasa flow and Hatha is called Hatha yoga. So the first pose we're going to do, this right now is actually a pose. This is the humble warrior. And I like to call when we go down and we just touch our, our head to the ground, I like to call it the meek warrior, but it's actually child's pose. <laughs> and that's where we're going. I'm gonna turn sideways so it's easier to see me. Okay, so we're going to take an active child's pose in contrast to a passive child's pose, which we'll do more of in yin. So an active child's pose means that our knees are going to point towards either side of the mat and our body is going to fold over. Our feet are resting. Are resting. You can see my feet. They're resting passively on the ground. They're not necessarily activated. There's no tension moving through them. And our body is going to fold through our legs or rest on our legs. And you are welcome to use a bolster. Let me grab one so I can demonstrate. 
or two. I'm gonna grab two. Always in in poses that you hold for a, quite some time, it's really important to use um, support. So one way you can use a bolster is to actually support your upper body if your if your body doesn't go through your legs. Another way you can use your bolster if if you are struggling to comfortably sit back is you can sit back on the bolster instead or two and then give yourself that space for your child's pose. Gentleness is the rule in my opinion when it comes to yoga. I have so many rules. <laughs> no, gentleness is um, one of the principles that I think allows us to have a sustainable yoga practice. So let's get into this pose. Our hands are stretched forward. Our body is supported over our legs. Our shoulders are just past the knees. Our shoulders are still tucked away from our ears. That means they're tucked towards the heart, protecting the heart. The heart is the guidance system. It's the captain of the ship. It needs the most protection. It needs to be handled with the most care. Our second in command is our co-captain. Well, second in command, I want to be clear about that, is our mind, our eyes, our ears. They see, but they see based on what the heart believes or guides them to see. That's why that famous Shakespeare quote, you can make a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven. That's why the heart matters so much. That's why we protect it. But just like a captain, it's resilient and strong and wise. It knows more than we quote unquote know. And we learn to trust it. And yoga helps us open up to that. So let's think about the grounding aspect of this pose. Our hands are on the ground in the activated position. The elbows are touching the ground. The forearms might be touching the ground. The shins are touching the ground. The tops of the knees, the kneecaps are touching the ground. The ankles are touching the ground. The toes are touching the ground. And notice that where each point touches, it has just a little bit of expansion there. If we stiffen up, we have less surface area on the ground. If we relax into the pose, we have more surface area on the ground. The key to grounding is allowing the points that are in contact with the ground to relax. This is your hug with the earth. Have you ever hugged someone and they're stiff? They're doing so much work to protect themselves, but the earth wants to embrace you. When you hug someone who's stiff, you're, you're surprised. You want to hug them. They're not letting you support them. You, when we do balancing poses and even poses like this, we, we might say, oh, it's yoga. It's really hard and stiffen up. Now we're doing the work that the earth can do for us. We want to let every point of contact with the earth embrace the earth. That's how we ground and that's how we balance. Okay, let's push up into the hands and we're going to just move we're just gonna walk to tabletop, sit back on our heels, our toes are flipped forward, push back up to two feet, two standing feet. And now we're gonna take Uttanasana. This is our next grounding pose. We're not gonna stay here as long as we stayed in child's pose. 
our two feet are parallel, hip width apart. The way to know your hips width apart is two fists between your feet. Your hips are narrower than you might think. <laughs> You're welcome to use a bolster or to bend your legs so that you can be in contact with the ground. The bolster would just be to support your body so that it's farther from your thighs, but you can comfortably have two hands on the ground. You can also use your bolster to be the thing that you balance on because you're not using it for actual handstand or something. Do what you need to do to Get in contact with the ground. Notice your hands, are they in the protective positioning? These are now your contacts with the earth. Aim to have equal balance in your hands. That's why we need to use the protective positioning. And in your feet. Don't put it all in your feet. You'll strain your legs. Don't put it all in your hands. Then your feet don't have anything to do. Everything in this pose has a reason to be in contact with the earth. This is demonstrating Newton's third law of physics. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The more we embrace the earth, the more we expand what surface areas of our body we have in contact with the earth, the more the earth is going to push against us and protect us. In this pose, the earth is essentially giving us a high five because we're giving it a high five. We're giving it a, a high 20, <laughs> five digits, four parts, 20. And now you're just going to roll up through your spine, making sure you're breathing in the breath. Actually, before you leave here, put your hand on your lower back and send the breath to that place. It's a subtle feeling of expansion, but see if you can feel that expansion. Inhale, exhale. See if you can feel the contraction. Inhale, exhale. Okay. That's where you want the breath all the time. That is an efficient breath. That is a sumptuous breath. Let's roll up through the spine. When we breathe that way, we get out of emergency mode. Our body gets more oxygen from a breath that is come, that comes through the belly. And our body uses less resources, less energy to have that breath. When we breathe through the rib cage, through this emergency area, which most of us think is the right place to breathe, we're actually setting ourselves back in a place of emergency. Our next grounding pose is Tadasana. This is known as mountain pose. Two feet. The feet can touch or be shoulder width apart. Two feet. Hands can be at the heart in Samasidihi or on either side. I'm going to go for either side. And we're just going to, again, look at those points of embrace. Here, the emphasis is on the balls of the feet and the heels. But from there, just like we had the hands and we had the L and then the other hands unfold from the L, here, the feet, the balls of the feet and the heels are the point of contact. But from there, let the rest of the body, the rest of the toes, the rest of the foot, embrace and hold and touch and luxuriate in the points of contact with the ground. This pose is not easy because it requires a level of, uh, excuse me, a consistent readiness. So there's a spiral moving around our quads and that spiral, that that motion, that emphasis around the quads is protecting the knees like tape. And then that spiral continues around the thighs. So there's this, there's this strength that's pushing into the ground. And what's spiraling down, what goes down, what goes up must come down. What pushes down can't help but grow up. That's why we hear the phrase root 
to rise. So that's why the hands are so naturally able to be here because the spiral is continuing through the upper body. And if we do our hands and heart, the spiral continues across the shoulders, down and up if we're in Samasidhi. Okay. So from here, from this very strong Tadasana, notice my knees are not locked. They're not bent all the way. They're just straight. They've been doing a lot of work. My legs are going to be, your legs might be warm. They might be shaking right now with that emphasis on pushing down to come up. So now we hit the mountain top of our poses today. In yoga, you'll notice that you'll hit, you'll have three mountains that you do in one hour, three points of three high points that you reach, and then you go back down the mountain, and then you go up another mountain, and then you go back down that mountain. Well, we're reaching our mountain top for today's snack, today's morning yoga. We're going to take tree pose. So with tree pose, with any balance pose, it's actually a grounding pose. So I want you to think more about grounding than about balancing. So we're going to start with our right leg. We're going to push into the ball of our foot. As we do that, we're pushing strongly into all of those points of embrace on our left foot. And now that we're ha we have more action happening on our left foot, it's embracing the earth more. And as we embrace the earth more, it embraces us, okay? So we're going to just push into the ground and we're gonna start with mountain pose being right here. Our foot kick stopped against our ankle. Right foot is kick stopped against the left ankle. That is a point of balance. The point of balance is happening between the ball of the foot and the heel. That space, that magical space is our balance. All those points of contact that make that little bridge possible is our balance. From there, we'll just have the foot climb up a little bit. We might stop here right above the ankle and below the knee on the calf. From there, if we're feeling solid, we can't stop at the knee because that would hurt the knee and we wanna protect the knee. So you can, you can use your hand to place your foot above the knee or you can let it reach. I think that's much harder to let it reach and I'm falling over <laughs> by doing that. I think it's easier to place your foot. And now you're in tree here. Okay. If you want to take it farther, you can put your foot in your pocket, <laughs> in your hip pocket. So now the bottom of the foot faces the sky and the knee points to the ground. And when you activate that left leg, the same way I told you to activate it in Tadasana, then it actually creates this lovely shelf. The hip um, kind of pushing like that creates a shelf for the foot. And then the two hands can come to prayer. You can grow your tree. You can have the hand up and over here. If you've seen my uh, book cover on Kindle for this, uh, the primer that is the companion to this program, you'll see the person in the picture, the shadow is this pose. You can grow your tree. You can challenge your balance by looking at the sky. You can challenge your balance more by closing your eyes, which I can't do today. <laughs> and now let's pack our tree back. Always thinking of our point of contact with the earth, that's what is going to allow us to gently, calmly unpack our tree the very way that we came into it. It's that point of contact with the earth. Let's do the other side. Let me back up a little bit so you can see my feet. Pushing into the ground, the right foot. Ball of the foot on the left. Kickstand. <sighs> breathing. Am I breathing here? <sighs> Am I breathing here? <sighs> When we push into that Tadasana position that we talked about earlier, it also keeps us from leaning into the thigh because that's going to make it really hard to balance because you've broken the column that, that support that you made, that support beam. So you got to get that support beam back. And that's why this is really helpful. 
versus. Okay. I'm seeing that these colors are not great for camera. They'll probably never be seen again on camera. <laughs> uh, okay. Pushing into the right leg. Kickstand. Below the knee. <sighs> above the knee, maybe helping it with the hand. All of these places are where you can stop. You had the pose right here. That's the pose. Take it one step further if you wish. And for those of you who have been in my class, you know there's even further we can go with tree. Or just not today. Today I can't keep my right foot, I can't make the little shelf, it's not. It's not working, so I'm going to hold my right foot. Take my hand in half prayer. Take my hand up. And through. Always thinking about grounding, thinking about that connection with the earth. The more I can stay in communion with the ground, the easier it is to balance. Over time, your muscles will develop and they will get used to pushing into the ground. And that's what makes your balance even more stable. But we wanna gently let those muscles figure out, hey, if I use this muscle, let your body say, if I use this muscle, I can balance more easily. I'm gonna use this instead of being always on the brink of falling over. Okay. And now we're going to take two arms overhead and we're going to just point to the sky and we're going to bend to the right. Again, grounding. The more we ground, the farther we can reach out. And it's like you're between two panes of glass. So you're not this way, and you're not this way. You've actually been up and over, and you're twisting your upper body. And there you've got two twists going in two directions. Your lower body is twisting towards the front of the mat. Your upper body is twisting back and pointing back. Okay. Let's do the other side. This is called side angle bend. For the longest time, switch the grip. Switch the steeple grip. For the longest time, I thought this was called the half moon. And there's another half moon that I use all the time, and I called them both half moon. Because my teacher called it half moon. Breath matters here, obviously. But what I really want you to do is feel the result of 30 minutes of consistent grounding. You can reach farther the more you ground through those feet. Come back up to center. Hands come to either side, roll down through the spine, all the way down. That was a many, many tiny little back exercise. We're gonna do one more. We're gonna just do camel. So just stop here. This is your caffeine. If you don't drink caffeine, this is your coffee, your Earl Grey. Just one camel. Inhale. And come back up. Always need to do a little bit of spine work. And let's have two hands on the hips. Let your eyes float closed. Think about the intention you set for today, the devotion you are riding, the commitment you made to yourself for these next, for this challenge. Today is day two and you showed up. If you're just joining us today on day two, you can always go back and start again with day one and then join us for day three tomorrow. It's just so you're caught up. 
Okay. If you ever need to find your breath, this is the place to find it. Just bend over your body and send breath to the lower back and feel it expand and to keep doing that until you feel it actually expand. And that's how you can, again, ground in your body. So thank you for joining me today. You've completed day two of the Sunrise Yoga Challenge, Unleashing the Magic of Yoga. If you want more information about what we've done today, definitely check the description. There's a link to my Kindle primer. It's called Unleashing the Magic of Yoga, a primer. It's a short read, and it gives you a deeper background on what we're doing. Have a wonderful day today. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. Thank you for joining me.